Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to committee hearing for the Committee on Parks and Recreation. We're going to be voting on two bills today, uh, intro 407A um, and intro 1411A. I'll say a word on each. Um, first, we're going to be voting on a bill whose lead sponsor is the great Jimmy Vaca, Deputy Majority Leader, who... Uh, uh, James James Vaca, what's the what's your middle name, uh, Councilman? <laughs> James Michael Vaca, Deputy Majority Leader, um, which uh, addresses one of the issues, if not the single issue, which we have most been consumed by in this committee, which is the capital process, which is far too long, far too expensive, and um, also far too opaque. And um, Councilmember Vaca rightly has focused his bill on the need for council members to understand when there are delays in capital projects in our district because um, being able to give accurate information to our constituents is of vital importance. And his bill would require notice within 30 days of any uh, material delays in capital projects. Um, and, and I am strongly in support of the bill and I believe all of my colleagues are as well. We're also hearing intro 1411A whose lead sponsor is Councilmember Joe Borelli, who uh, could not be here today. We understand traffic from the island was very bad. Um, those of us who are from Manhattan and on other dense parts of the city uh, are surprised to learn that there are streets in New York City that don't have sidewalks. Mm. Uh, and that in many cases there are parks that are not lined with sidewalks. And so when young people are trying to get uh, from a car that might be parked a block away to their baseball game in that park, they have to walk in the middle of the street. It's a big problem in Staten Island and some other parts, particularly in Queens. And so Councilmember Borelli has a very common sense bill that would require any time the Parks Department is doing major capital work on a ball field or athletic field that they have to install a sidewalk with an entrance. Uh, how this wasn't already in place as a rule uh, decades ago, I don't know, but we're pleased that Councilmember Borelli has introduced this bill. So I'm going to pause and see if our Deputy Majority Leader, James Michael Vaca, would like to say a word or two on intro 407A. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And as the Chair stated, we here in the Council fund many capital projects because we want to make our neighborhoods better, but too often they're massive cost overruns. Uh, and especially when it comes to parks projects. And it can feel like we're allocating funds into a bottomless pit. The reality is that our money is finite, and we can get discouraged from allocating funds to projects we know the community needs. And I speak to you as someone whose district has the largest park in the city, Pelham Bay Park, and I funded so many projects in my district in the 12 years I've served here. The Parks Department has a structured capital project process, and it usually takes years from the time we allocate our money until the time the project is completed. This project process necessarily involves time to gather all the funds, design the project, select the contractor, and then finally start construction. Unfortunately, this process often involves contractors' change orders, which can endlessly hold up construction. Delays in projects often create confusion in the community and are not transparent. We need accountability when it comes to the public's money, and my bill would increase transparency by requiring the Department of Parks to proactively notify council members when there are changes of greater than 10% to projects that cost over $500,000. When we are notified, we'll be able to more effectively exercise our oversight role, work to make the capital process work more efficiently and keep our communities informed about ongoing projects. I want to thank the committee for considering the legislation and I also want to thank Parks for all the great work that they do in our communities. Thank you. Thank you member. Thank you council member and deputy majority leader and we're going to ask the committee clerk Billy Martin to call the roll for the vote. William Martin committee clerk roll call vote committee on parks and recreation. Items are coupled. Chair Levine. I vote aye on all. Mealy. I vote aye on all, and I salute my colleague for this great legislation because we do really need to know exactly when these um, 
projects are slowed up because it's not fair to the next council member either that they would know when their term is up, they still had that money in there, and then the next council member, they will reap the benefits. But as long as it's free for the community, I thank you for this legislation. I vote aye on all. Cabrera. Aye. Mizell. Yes. We have a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Both items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you. Duncan, I'd like to ask the clerk if we can keep the roll open for... What's that? Okay, so you're here to... Okay, let's... Let, since you're here... Continuation roll call, the Committee on Parks and Recreation. Councilmember Cohen. I vote aye. Vote now stands at five in the affirmative. 